Welcome back to the instant reaction to UFC Vegas 85. Uh, I'm a little bit lost for words, to be honest, after that main and co-main. Uh, there's a lot to talk about. The card started out like utter shit, but then fortunately it really picked up. Uh, the main card was pretty entertaining. Um, I think it was hands down one of the worst fights, uh, worst fight nights I've ever had for picks. Um, so time to face the fucking music. Uh, like and subscribe we are edging close to 600 subscribers let's get into it all right so fight number one uh heavyweight revealed itself again as the shallowest division in the ufc uh we knew this one was going to be messy and i guess from that perspective it did not disappoint now, firstly, I have to say, uh, Daniel Cormier is an imbecile that sucks off wrestlers and doesn't understand the scoring criteria, and I'm sick of listening to his bullshit. Um, I did pick Peterson, and he did not win this fight. Um, as soon as Antoine uh, sent me a still of this utter pudding on the scales, uh, I knew I'd fuck the monkey on this one. Uh, I did not bet on Peterson, obviously. Uh, I'm not retarded. Or, well, you know, I haven't been checked yet. And I'll never let them get to me. Uh, Lardy Peterson landed like two takedowns in the first round. Which was great and all that. Uh, he did land a couple of shots. But Pogues pretty much pieced him up for the first two rounds. Uh, in the third, they were pretty much both breathing heavily. And mostly looked at each other. Uh, Peterson did not gas as hard as I expected. But with hands like that, he's really going to have no success at heavyweight. They are all shit, but they all hit pretty heavy. Uh, he couldn't land takedowns after the second round. He's a fat panda that will amount to nothing. Uh, the eye poke he landed with a minute to go was probably his best offensive moment in the entire fight. Uh, gotta give him five. Uh, it was pretty good though. It gave him five minutes to chill. The fat fuck will get his four fights on his contract. I remember kind of chuckling at that when they brought it up. But heavyweight is really dog shit and he will get it. Uh, Pogues won. Mildly happy for him. Uh, next. All right, fight number two. Uh, this one was a bitter disappointment. Uh, Quinones put pressure on from the start and looked really up for this, which was a pretty good move. Uh, he made it really hard for Medeiros to settle and get into a rhythm. Uh, you know what, honestly, though? I don't know how to score this piece of shit. Uh, Medeiros looked stronger in the clinch uh, when they exchanged and, and was able to muscle him around a little bit, but he couldn't get takedowns. Uh, Medeiros caught him with a left at the midpoint of the first round and cut his eye, then started brushing off the takedowns and finding the range. Uh, I thought he edged around, but, you know, who knows? Now, the second round, Medeiros continued to pop that jab off, and Cornones went where we expected to in the clinch, and already proved he wasn't as strong there. So, Medeiros just said thanks and hugged him for two minutes. Uh, I'm not going to lie, I hyped this one, uh, and it was beyond boring. Cornones did land with a little bit more FUD, while Medeiros was landing more, I guess. When they did break, though, uh, Medeiros chopped his legs down, and you could see that the eye was starting to get a little bit bloody on the... I think it was the right eye of Quinones. Uh, maybe the visuals helped. Now, the third round was forgettable garbage. Uh, the unanimous scorecard was a little bit surprising. And I feel like I might have stolen one here, I won't lie. Uh, both these men are not really high level in my book. Uh, when either guy fights anyone that can wrestle, they're both fucked. All right, fight number three. They need to stop letting unattractive women lower in the rankings fight. There, I said it. Uh, Carolina missed weight by five pounds and surprisingly looked fresh as a daisy. Who would have guessed that? 
Stoli Orenko should have told her to go fuck herself at that point. Now, when predicting this, we said that either Stoli Orenko would find the takedowns and a sub, or Carolina would point fight to a win. And guess what almost happened? Uh, this is what I hate about weight misses, by the way. Uh, first round, Carolina had the better of the striking. Better, not good, which we expected. And Stoli Orenko struggled to take the heavier girl down. Now, Carolina did make a mistake and ended up fighting off an armbar. But in a normal human fight, uh, Carolina should have won that round. But we know in women's MMA, the scoring criteria is apparently quite different. So who really knows? Uh, Molly McCann lost to this dumpy rubbish girl. And I found myself drifting off at times during this fight and thinking about how bad she actually is. Anyway, Stoli Orenko had some cage control in round, round two, then decided to pull guard. And I felt like just kicking my monitor over and going to bed. Uh, threw the round in the bin getting smacked with awful ground and pound. Now in the third round they scissored standing for two minutes and I was questioning my love for the sport at this point. Then Stoli Orenko pulled guard again, almost had a sub locked in and then just gave up. Then Carolina just sat on her and just pounded her out and the fight was, was stopped with about 10 seconds left. The dancing and grinning like a mong annoyed me. You missed weight you fucking disgrace and I hope she gets flatlined in her next fight. All right, fight number four. Uh, I could not have been more wrong about this one. Uh, I called Lee a tin can crusher, and yeah, I guess he still kind of is, but this was a great performance. Body strikes were on point, and we know how much I love those. The diversity in his strikes were really good, and he looked way bigger and way longer than Builder in there. It was clear at the midpoint of the first that Builder had no advantages in there whatsoever, couldn't get takedowns and kept going for them and Lee just elbowed the fuck out of him while he held on for dear life. Uh, when they did break, Lee just teed off on him and beat him up. Uh, Lee's length and diversity, as I said, at featherweight is going to be a great weapon for him, and his takedown defense looks to be on point. Uh, he ended the fight with ground and pound after Builder threatened a standing ghillie. Uh, total waste of time when you're in a fight with a man. Anyway, Builder will probably be cut off this, but maybe a spin in the regionals might do him some good. Uh, it was a total mismatch. Lee might be one to watch out for. Dominant performance. Well done, Lee. All right, so fight number five. Whoa. Uh, Rodriguez's nickname is Dead Game. Uh, Antoine, I'm looking at you. How was that not brought up? That shit, that shit turned out to be apt. That boy got starched. Now, I admit I shit on Garimbo and could not have got this more wrong. Nobody expected this, though. Garimbo's basically a wrestler. Anyway, his time at MMA Masters seems to have paid off. Uh, he caught Rodriguez less than a minute in, who was so confused as he fell that he tried to double leg Herb Dean. Uh, that's the ref for you casuals out there. Not the first or last time we're going to see that happen. Garimbo ended up justifying being a minus 300 favorite. What more can I say? He starched him. I do find the guy fucking cringe though, I have to be honest. He's not the first fighter to come into the organization broke, but he will be the last to get gifted a free house. Fair play to him, he seems grateful or whatever, and he got this done in devastating fashion. All right, fight number six. I really nailed this one, and there's a lot to unpack here. This was easily the best fight of the night so far, which if we're being honest with what we've seen so far, means kind of fuck all. Now, Maxim did look good starting this one out. The jab looked like it did in the regionals, very piston-like, and against a lesser man, that ghillie he had locked in in the first round on the ground could have been the end. Thing is though, Maxim is just 
not a 10 uh not a 17 and 0 level guy and i've been saying this once johnson started using his high guard to block the jab and started landing good teeps to the body he basically started to take over uh, maxim's biggest problem is that he's not diverse enough in his striking or dominant enough in the grappling positions to be a problem at this weight class and this really showed tonight uh, one criticism i do have of johnson is that he seems to play around in there too much but he does kind of use it to set the striking up so it's kind of a little bit hard to be too critical of him now johnson won the second and the third round by landing more and negating the striking almost had maxim out in the third with a standing ninja choke and then ended it with ground and pound to put a punctuation on things uh, he would have been cut after this um if he'd lost which would have been unfair so i'm actually glad he got it done great win uh, maxim has a lot of work to do just having a jab and decent takedowns aren't going to cut it in pound for pound the most skilled division in the ufc and this one's going to set him way back All right, fight number seven. Uh, this was a pretty good fight for what it was, but I'm still pretty pissed off by the booking of it, if I'm honest. This was basically set up as a layup for Molly McCann. Uh, you know, she got put in there with somebody that will oblige her in the striking, but doesn't have any power whatsoever. Now, Balbia came in there with a seven inch reach advantage, but you wouldn't really know it. Uh, she doesn't have a clue how to use it whatsoever. She was constantly waiting for McCann to act and was so reactionary in there. She refused to go first and you can't do that against somebody like McCann who isn't very good. But if you do that with her, she's just going to piece you up. Uh, she did have one good moment when they broke in the clinch and she need Molly in the head. But then Molly was able to take her down twice, in fact. And after um, out striking her like this was a fucking sparring session, uh, it was the second takedown that would actually lead to the win. After threatening ground and pound with uh, 10 seconds left on the clock, uh, Belbito got caught in a really bad position and Molly snatched her arm and snapped it in two. Literally. Another hot girl on the garbage heap. I think she should uh, holler at Viana and get something going on OnlyFans. I'd be pretty much down for that. Good win for McCann, I guess. If she thinks that Strawweight is going to be an easier ride though, she's going to get a rude awakening soon enough. She started mouthing off immediately as scummy scousers tend to do, you know, shouting, uh, how do you like me now? You're still shit, mate. All right, so quick overview of the prelims. And yeah, this did not go well for me, I'll be honest. Uh, fortunately, at this point, it was the fights I had not bet on and advised everyone to not bet on. So I was still feeling pretty smug at this point. The smirk was likely to be wiped, wiped off my face though, but let's not spoil that too quickly. Uh, Antoine wins that round. Hats off to you, sir. Alright, so onto the main card. Uh, this was a great performance at Welterweight and finally the moment when Radke put all the work he got in the gym into action under the bright lights. A lot of people speak about him as a savage in the gym and he showed it tonight. Uh, I quite liked Abina's approach to begin with though. Uh, he was clearly wary about, wary about the takedown, so didn't loot kicks, just stabbed kicks to the body, and that seemed to keep Radke at bay. He was doing a good job battering the fire, but then didn't stick to it at all. Like Radke's fire was literally bruised to shit, and Abina just stopped booting him there. Uh, Abina was moving laterally a lot without really doing much, but when he claimed that erroneous dick shot that clearly missed, I kind of wanted him to lose after that. Uh, right as the round looked like it was fizzling out, Radke stepped in under a left hook and landed a devastating left of his own that dropped to Bina, who seemed to recover kind of well. But as he came in again, Radke dropped him again, and that was the end. Uh, the post-fight attitude was great to see as well. Uh, it was good to see someone take advantage of that moment. Very few fighters do that. He talked a lot of shit, and I'm not going to lie, I really enjoyed it. Uh, Bilal should hang out with this guy a lot more. He could probably teach him a thing or two. If he can continue to get over his fight nerves and put in displays like this, he might actually do alright at welterweight. 
It's pretty weak outside the top 10, so he's got every opportunity. Right, fight two. Well, this happens once in a while and fucks it for everyone. There was an eye poke, 11 seconds in. It was a bad one by Kizriev, who I was confident was going to fuck him up. And that ended the fight. No contest, 11 seconds. Run it back in a month or so. I want my money and I'm going to be ready to collect it next time. It was pretty clear in that 11 seconds to me that Kizriev's going to fuck this guy up when they fight again. Moving on. All right, cake. Uh, yeah, this fight went exactly how I expected it to go. And the first thing I have to say is, I don't like how Mark Smith ref this at all. And it wasn't the first time he would do this. Now, Silver had the clear speed and accuracy advantage. And damn, it was really stark in that department. Uh, we knew that Vivienne's best chance was to clinch and make it ugly. And while we all get pissed by that style at times, she was not given the chance to apply her game at all. She was trying to find positions. Was it working? Probably not. But if you're going to do this, just be consistent with, consistent with it. I'm pretty sure that next week we're going to see two fat polar bears breathing all over each other in the clinch and no one's going to break it up. Anyway, Silver is exceptional. Exactly what we thought she was. The striking was absolutely elite. At flyweight though, I still worry about her a little bit. She's going to have to find a way of negating clinch positions. Because when she gets into that top five, it could get very hard for her. Takedown defense looked good, but Vivian isn't the best at that, so I'm not sure. The bundle was good. The striking diversity was good. Did I mention the bundle was good? Now, there was an argument for a 30-27, but the UD 29-28 was probably fair. Less of the singing happy birthday at the end, though. We fucking ruined it. Dropped from an 8 to a 7 after that. Next. Yeah, this one again went pretty much how we both predicted, uh, barring the finish that happens. Uh, Salagov actually did a really good job whacking away at the calf, which we said would happen. And Brown was using the range to pop the jab out and land really quick high kicks, which were getting closer and closer the more the fight went on. Now, Brown is proving to be very composed in there these days. And while I do think he needs to overcome the way he plants his lead leg, he did seem unaffected by getting whacked in the calf in this contest, so it didn't really matter too much. It's just something to look out for. After landing a really nice double jab with his left, which he used to ghost in a check right that landed right on the draw jaw, uh, Salakov tumbled to the ground and the fight was clearly over. Uh, Randy looks far more filled out at this weight class now, especially in the top half of his body. He's still got those twiglet legs though, so he might want to do something about that. Call for a fight on UFC 300. I mean, why not? He's not going to get it, but that card is ass anyway. A good win for Brown, and the TKO, TKO will do him the world of good. Uh, we then got a Pfeiffer and her, her Manson promo, which came after this. Early thoughts. What do you guys think about that one? All right, Jesus Christ, this was wild. I, I don't even know where to start. Uh, Hernato Moicano is a superstar. Uh, he took Dober down and seemed to be controlling the fight for the first seven and a half minutes. He clearly wasn't really willing to play the striking game with him, which who can blame him. Really nice transitioning on the ground, landed ground and pound and had Dober looking in real trouble, uh, who couldn't get his game off. Uh, then in the midpoint of the second round, uh, Dover managed to get to his feet, at feet. And I don't know how it happened. It could have been a headbutt. I might have to go back and have a look at it. 
but Moicano gets his head split like a coconut and then gets mounted. Drew Dober's pounding him out on the ground, loses the round, and I'm thinking, oh fuck. Now in the third round, Money managed to get a takedown again, and he saw out the round by beating Dober up. Uh, Mark Smith actually told him to be active 10 seconds after getting him down. Someone needs to have a word with that fucking retard. Anyway, the fight was a clear 2-1, and maximum credit to this man for getting tired, facing adversity, and yet finding a way to get it done against a really tough Chad motherfucker. Now onto the post fight. And again, my God. Uh, he didn't let DC get a word in, which I always appreciate. Uh, fuck your questions. Uh, talked about his father having a baby at 62. Uh, said he was going to go home and fuck his wife. Talked about love in America and wanting to join a SWAT team uh, when getting his green card. Then rounded it off by calling the MMA guru a fat pig and basically calling him out for saying he was going to lose the fight. Uh, we needed this man back and he delivered in every way possible. Rescued this card single-handedly up to that point. Go check his YouTube out. The guy is a national treasure. All right, so onto the main event. And in a division that sucks, this one matters somewhat. And boy, this was a fucking war. Like, it kind of sucks that I cashed out with Imavov on the last leg of the ticket, but it is what it is. Uh, at least I made out with some decent money. Now, Imavov has such clean striking and Delizzi is so slow and telegraphed in there. Uh, Imavov managed to get on top with about a minute and a half to go and beat the absolute fuck out of him. Uh, it was a clear 10-8 as it gets. And was actually a miracle that he made it out of there and into round two. But it wasn't looking good at, at that point. Fair play to Herb Dean for letting it, to, letting it, letting it uh, continue. Because he wouldn't have got the drama we ended up getting. Now round two started and fair play to him. Delizzi managed to weather the storm a little. And Imavov looked a little bit tired going for a finish in the first. Now Delizzi did manage to dig some underhooks and clear the cobwebs. But as soon as they broke... He stayed back in boxing range again and just kept getting clipped. Uh, it was clear that, De that Delizzi only had the advantage in the clinch. And it was equally clear that the refs weren't entertaining that bullshit tonight. If they stay consistent with it for every fight, I'm actually all for it. Anyway, when they stood in striking range, it was clear who the real daddy was. And it wasn't Roman. Uh, he faded as we all predicted a little bit. And it was clear who the well-rounded and skilled fighter was, or seemed to be, up to that point at the end of the third round. Uh, the straight kicks to the body, the fast clean shots were brutal, and the striking disparity by the end of the third round was insane. Imavov was clearly ahead. He had a 10-8 in the first, two 10-9s in the second and third, and it looked like he was coasting. But just as we fought that, shit suddenly got wild. Uh, Deledzi uh, had a hand down, which by my understanding in that position is technically a grounded opponent. Uh, and Imavov kind of stepped around and kicked him in the eyeball. Uh, then all hell broke loose and Imavov started going at Chris Curtis, who to be fair is a total cunt. Uh, fair play to Delidzi. He manned up though, carried on fighting when he could have quit. And it led to a point dot for Imavov. Uh, then Delidzi came out and won the rest of the round, possibly getting a 10-8 back. So it was fight on in my opinion. But I still had Imavov up two with the two 10-8s wiping each other out. And Roman needed a finish. And credit to him, he did have a go in the fifth round. But he just ended up eating more shots and surviving, which again I give him credit for. And outside the clinching and a few wing strikes that grazed Imavov. Uh, he basically got his ass whipped for this whole fight. Uh, he might want to watch out. Uh, Cheyenne does not have time for losers. Ask JP. Uh, it was a great fight. There was a shitload of drama. Toughness from both men. Fun fight to watch. I don't know how one of the judges had a draw on the scorecards though. It's bananas to me. Good win though. Alright, so the main and co-main saved the card pretty much. And it turned out to be entertaining enough just for that. So here's an overview. Uh, I made a little money, I, I banded it out of about 150 bucks, which isn't too bad. 
I uh, ended up splitting the cards six and six, so no losing records. Um, I've got a pod releasing on Wednesday and a breakdown of UFC Fight Night Hermanson versus Pyfar. Um, I didn't even aware that, that I wasn't even aware that that was the main event. Whatever. Uh, see you all in a bit and have a great weekend. Take it easy.